And PSI, if I'm not mistaken, deals a lot with social franchising, for instance. Right. Uh, so if you're an expert in that field, for instance, how do you choose your partners? Right. Well, social franchising is a cousin of social marketing, a, a doctrine that we've been using for many decades now and that others use as well to try and reach poor and vulnerable consumers. Mm -hmm. The idea is that, as we know, there are lots of private providers out there who are providing health care services to, to poor and vulnerable populations. Some of them are doing it well. Many of them are doing it not so well. They are, in essence, medical entrepreneurs. Let's call them what they are. They're private business people who are running a small clinic that may be in a, an urban slum or a peri-urban area or even a remote rural, uh, rur rural area, excuse me, and reaching uh, a, a demographic there that doesn't get served by the public sector mm -hmm. and that can't necessarily afford, let's call it a high-end private clinic somewhere. So how do we go about recruiting people who might be serving that demographic and helping them to improve their quality, ensuring that they're providing quality services and products, that they're, that they're receiving some on-the-job training to improve their skills, that they are um, networked to a, a global system that allows them to learn and improve their service delivery. Uh, that's an effort that our on-the-ground teams do by going out and understanding the market, mm. looking at uh, where the traffic is going already, what, what are what are consumers, health consumers in that marketplace choosing, and trying to recruit those medical entre entrepreneurs, uh, the private sector providers, with a sort of a franchise agreement. Now, it's not the same really as a McDonald's franchise agreement, but it's akin to that. The idea is it's not an exchange of resources between us and the private provider, but if we know that we can improve that provider's quality and give him or her access perhaps to subsidized high quality products and brand them for a particular service that they may be offering. Let's call it uh, reproductive health services, for example, as part of their business, or let's call it screening for hypertension, for example, or anything like that. Uh, well baby checks. Brand them in the community. Do some awareness raising around that, using the tools of social marketing. Create an awareness, draw business to them these medical entrepreneurs then see the benefit of the franchise that they've agreed to. They know that they have to maintain certain quality standards to be a part of that franchise. And it's a very cost-effective way to reach a lot of people through a channel that they are already using, but improving the quality of it. Um, there, you know, the evidence base, to be frank, is less robust in supporting social franchising than I think it is in social marketing. We think there's a strong case to be made for social franchising. There's a big community of practice out there mm -hmm. that is learning more about social franchising, studying it. There are conferences about it. We're happy to be a part of that community as we try right. and improve on it. But we know that through the social franchises that we help operate in more than 20 countries, we're reaching about 10 million health consumers every year. And that's a lot. And that's a lot. 